Should we have a look ahead now to the semi-finals then? Come on, then. Okay, then. Where do England need to get better to beat the box, Goody? Everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Genuinely, everywhere. Uh, not goal kicking. Give us a percentage. How much percentage do they need to be better, Goody? Oh, I was going to say give me a percentage of the chance of them winning. That's what I was thinking in my head. All right, we'll, we'll do that and then how much better they need to be. I've got a, a number in my head percentage-wise. They need to wise, get having... 38.4% better. Oh, I was going to say 40% better, which is a big number. So Close. it's slightly bigger than yours. Only, yeah. two, we'll just say 2%. I can't work out the 1.6. 1. 1. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah. I, knew it was, I knew it was going to be closer. I, just, I was going to say 1.7, but I forgot <laughs> what you said. But I agree. Mate, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. But, but I'll go back areas. to my original point. Let me go back to my original point that I said. Because on Twitter, I did quote, comment, tweet someone and say that this England team have got history, blah, 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 blah. We've gone through it before. But desperate men make dangerous men. Yeah. And if they go into this game and they are desperate and they get to the levels in which they can do, and then players... It's not as if you've got Farrell who's never been at that level. You've yeah. got Genji never been at that le- level. Jamie, Jamie George, George, Manu. Manu. Like, Manu. There you go. You start not so much Johnny May, the, but... There you go. You start name dropping the players. Yeah. They've got to that level of desperation. Yeah. And when you get to that level, you're dangerous. And it's a one-off game now in the semi-finals. Not that I'm convincing people that England are going to beat South Africa. I am. But. Come on, England. Yeah, I mean, but th- there are a couple of deficiencies that I've seen in South Africa. Uh, oh, here we go. Where, where England can attack them. First of all, the hinge at the back of the line out where... You shorten a line out, you have a peel round, there's a lot of space there. Mal Herber's generally at the back of the line out. There's a lot of yardage to be made there in those channels with some cute plays. So there is opportunities there, but obviously to do that, you've got to have line outs in attacking zones. Um, let's be honest, who saw France more than 20 metres? Who saw that coming? Mm. So England will have a go at them all. Yeah, but it's got to be... Listen, everything England's got to do has got to be at a pace that we've only probably displayed in 5% of our game. Like, there's been some snippets where we played at pace, but the top teams are doing it for 60 minutes relentlessly. Um, so, jacking back to short sides, I think France got a lot of change out of that as well. Um, I think if you're going the same way against Africa and it's slow and ponderous, then we are going to get absolutely monstered. So, in attack, it, we've got to play... Out of pace. It'd be interesting to see selections. Obviously, going to be key uh, and what the South Africans do. But midfield jackbacks sometimes they overfold. There is yards to be had down there. Um, but they are. Listen, England have got to raise their game significantly, like thirty-eight point four percent significantly, forty percent in Jim's eyes. But we can do it. Um, there, there are world-class players in our team with World Cup experience of getting to a final. You need to use the hurt of four years ago. Uh, where we got dismantled in the final, you know, Eddie Jones turned up on the bus late, um, and it wasn't. Imagine that you get to a World Cup final and then Eddie's fucked up and the bus is late, and then the knock-on effect of that stuff, everyone was a bit frazzled. So, preparation's key. Um, do I, I think there's? I think there's twenty percent chance that England can win this game. Twenty percent, in my opinion, is a decent number for an England squad. Where the rest of the world are probably saying it's a foregone conclusion, right? because of how good South Africa have been. South Africa like to play a stop-start game, right? They like to kick it out. They like to go sit piece to sit piece and slow yeah. the game down um, where they can. No, no well, they I'd can mix say it that now. that's the old South Africa. I'd say... Well, they kicked it out 12 times in the last different game. Different layers. Yeah, I know, but that's... Yeah, they kicked it out 12 times. But I tell they also did. Look. I tell they also did. Mark it under no pressure in your 22. Scrum. Call a scrum and the forwards have got to run back 35, 40 metres. What was that about? That was just and how big are your balls? Wow, well, and they showed them how big they were because they got a penalty, then they missed <laughs> touch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Imagine that. I think South Africa have got another layer to their yeah. game. Their kicking game, they go, they keep the ball in, they keep Peter Steph to toy in the five metre channels, yeah. Ebenet to Beth, they go high with the kicks. Um, yeah, that's why Freddie Stewart, for me, have to, has to mm. start for England. It's really hard call, actually, because Marcus... And it, I go back to the conversation that we had before Scotland played Ireland and when we talked about their selection, whether you go Hamish or whether you go Hugh Jones in the centres. You know, you've got to, you can't die wondering in this. So, do you go... I'd Actually, technically, I'd leave Marcus Smith at fullback 
and I'd have Freddie Stewart on the, on the wing. Yeah, and yeah. I'd drop Johnny That's May. A... I think Johnny May's been nowhere near um, the level that we've seen from him. Not even recently. He's been poor for a while. Um, so I'd go Freddie Stewart on the wing and keep Mark. He fullback. definitely needs to play. Freddie definitely needs to play. Yeah, yeah. You look at how South Africa beat France. Yeah. yeah, they got two tries from kicking to that far right side. Um, obviously, one try comes from Aaron to picking it up. And then the other one, um, Etzebeth gets it back and then it goes on to Dillande, doesn't it? And then a little pick and go and a, a little pop from Reinach to, uh, back to Dillande to score. So, yeah, it's it's going to be huge. I'd drop Johnny May and I'd have Freddie Stewart. I'd keep Marcus Smith in at fullback because he l- adds an excitement, a pace, a layer of attack where, you know, it may, it may not work for England, but at least you're asking the questions. Marcus will ask questions of South Africa from fullback and you can move him around defensively you can put him blindside wing you can put Elliot Daly to fullback and Freddie Stewart on that far wing or swap them around um, there's ways and means of dealing with that but I'm being enough Johnny May and I'm having Freddie Stewart back in the team but Mark is still wearing the 15 jersey score predictions James that's what I mean do you want the hype man or analyst man Analyst man, uh, I want. I want to know what I know. What I want to know what you guys both. think. I want both because I'm going to give one with my heart, one with my head. Okay, so for me, South Africa win. They're just too good from what I've seen. I, I, I don't know where England pull a performance out that can match what I've seen over the last few weeks with South Africa. Even that game against Ireland where they missed a few kicks at goal. I think. South Africa win. I think England give the very best account of themselves. I think they play as good as they've ever played, especially under Steve Borthwick. But I think South Africa win by 11. Ooh. And what, what, but what again, about, that's a What about the hype man? The score lines what about the hype man? Then South Africa win by 40. Oh, shut <laughs> up, Jim. <Jordan. laughs> <laughs> so you're going to hype it up. England are going to squeak it. I can't uh, see it. I, yeah. I've, I've not, mate. I've, I've not, I haven't seen it. I cannot, I cannot hype them up. Yeah. If they gave me something, and I agree they were good against Fiji in parts, they showed a bit of see you next Tuesday in some of their collisions, both yeah. attack and defence. But we also but switched I, off a bit not, as well, didn't we? Yeah, it's like we're watching two different games. Yeah. Like, as I know what you're saying, you were trying to big up the Marseille games. From my perspective, it was like almost two different tournaments. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go, my heart's going to say England are going to squeak it by two points with big fuzz. Owen Farrell... Leading charge, just getting better week on week and just excited to play in final again. Uh, but my head's saying South Africa by 12. And with England performing to our limits and having the bit between our teeth, having the boys with a bit about them, as we've seen in patches against Fiji. But I just think South Africa have too much. Um, and England fans come at me, say, you're being negative. I'm just being honest. It's just what I think. Desperate for England to win, but like a huge amount of respect for the South Africa team. We didn't even talk about Khaleesi getting taken off after 45 minutes. Yeah, it looked like, like he might have been carrying something. I saw that, that and I'm like, there's your skip gone. Uh, mm-hmm. They changed Marlon Lebock early as well. It'd be interesting what South Africa go with because I think they stick with the same you know, yeah. Marlon Lebock and you've got Andre Pollard to come on. But how about Nina Arba and Razzie, the geniuses? All the chat a few weeks ago was about the 7 1 bench. They went back to traditional 5 3. And it can be anything. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, I'm going South Africa by 12. Yeah, Faf starts at nine. Argentina or Blacks? Oh, foregone conclusion. No, James. No. There's a no. chance. All right. Less than England, I've got know. a chance. Yes, less than England, I'd say. I, just, I don't know how you go, and maybe this is the story. I mean, one thing, Argentina are well-supported. Proud yeah. nation, Latino flair, Latino spirit. But anyone who's watching rugby, any expert, analyst, hype man, name the Argentinian 15 without missing a beat compared to naming the All Blacks 15. Not that that is a snapshot of how a team's going to win, but it gives you a pretty good idea in terms of the quality. And that might be harsh to say. Love Argentina, love what they stand for, Argentinian friends. But from what I saw with the All Blacks there, from the history in the tournament, I would be more surprised of any game that I've seen in this tournament if Argentina beat the All Blacks. I just don't think they get anywhere near them. Yeah. You did say a surprise is coming though, didn't you, during the World Cup? Did I? At some point. 
did I? Well, I think yeah. I, I think we had one, didn't we? With Scotland getting knocked out by. No, that was not a surprise. <laughs> that was not a surprise, James. Um, yeah, I mean, you know what Checker needs to do? He needs to come out and say, "Have New Zealand played their final already?" Because it kind of works for the other teams. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm with Jim. New Zealand were phenomenal. Andy Rowe, when was the last time that Argentina beat New Zealand? It wasn't that long ago, was it? It wasn't long ago. It was in Christchurch last year. There you go. So there the will be belief from Los Pumas. Um, but I'm with Jim. The level that New Zealand got to, uh, they didn't look bad and bruised, did they? Are there any fresh. injuries, Andy Rowe, from your inside WhatsApp groups of knowledge? They're fresh. They're fresh. They're fresh. They're fresh. The one thing is a six-day turnaround and the intensity of the game against Ireland compared to the intensity of the one against Wales, yeah. very different. Maybe that's the thing. I don't think it is. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to see Argentina win it. How good would it be for World Rugby if Argentina beat New Zealand, James? Um, South American market, the fans that they bring, getting Messi to the final, yeah, it'd be pretty big. Yeah, so we both want Argentina to beat New Zealand, yeah? I d- uh, I don't know. I, well, you know, it doesn't matter no, what you want. No. What, what's going to happen? What's it's going not to elitist, happen? Joe. We, we need to stop being elitist. We, we need to see a different name on the trophy. Call it, Goody. Who's it's winning it? Uh, yeah, I'm going. Hart is desperate for Argentina to win because I think it'd be unbelievable to see their fans. How good are their fans? Unreal. Their fans. You talk about an atmosphere. There'll be an atmosphere in that semi final in Paris with the RGs around. Uh, I'm going to go. Hart wants Argentina. Head says New Zealand by 14. And Jim? Oh, hype man. All hype man's here. By 24. 24? 20. All right, 20 then. <laughs> pod, 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 pod. Rugby pod.